they estimate minimum 100 billion. I've seen figures twice that, three times that, in estimates by other people. From one in 1929. And at that point, they would have said, what we know is first step to awakening to true self. We know shit. From that starting point, we got a chance of knowing more than shit. Re-examine all you have been told. Dismiss what insults your soul, and that includes every word I say today if it insults your soul. Emancipate yourselves from mental slavery. I love the way he sings that, Bob Marley. None but ourselves can free our minds. So true. It's our mind, only we can free it. And people think about enlightenment as it's some kind of, you know, trotting down country lanes with violins and little, little butterflies flying around with beautiful colors. Actually, it is this, brilliantly, brilliantly set out. Make no mistake about it, enlightenment is a destructive process. Enlightenment is the crumbling away of untruth. It's seeing through the facade of pretense. It's the complete eradication of everything we imagine to be true. Blank sheet of paper, start in again. What goes on that blank sheet of paper has now got to convince me. And I don't care if you've got letters after your bloody name or letters before your name. I couldn't give a damn. I'm deciding my sense of reality, not the system. And uh, John Lennon said, the more real you get, the more unreal the world gets. Why? Because the more real awakened you become, the more you see the madhouse. And it's been going on for centuries. This is Leonardo da Vinci. I awoke only to see that the rest of the world was still asleep. But only when you awaken do you see the world's asleep because you were asleep with all of them before. This is what we need to transform human reality. We need the end of bloody normal. This is, a, this is a great line. Normal is getting dressed in clothes that you buy for work and driving through the traffic in a car you're still paying for. In order to get to the job, you need to pay for the clothes and the car and the house you leave vacant all day so you can afford to live in it. Brilliant. And... When, one, when a one person suffers from delusions, we call it mental illness. When a society suffers from them, we call it normal. Because who decides normal? That which controls the information within the society. There you go. I've just been called normal. I've never been so insulted. <laughs> Here, do you know they've said I'm not normal? I can't bloody believe it. Someone told me the other day. Ike is mad, he's not normal. You know, you know my response to that? The other my response has always been, thank bloody God for that, right? What a relief. A world that's insane thinks I'm mad, thank you God. Phew. History shows us that the people who end up changing the world are always nuts until they're right and then they're geniuses. History is alive with it. I said in a book years ago, today's mighty oak is just yesterday's nut that held its ground. Long enough for perceptions to change. Can you remember who you were before the world told you what you should be? Can any of us remember that? When we're born into a world and from day one we're told who we are, what we should do, what reality is, what we should aspire to, what we should oppose, all of it, just to program, you know, this is my space, I'll decide what comes into it, and I don't care if you're a parent or a school teacher or a bloody politician, a scientist, an academic, I decide what comes into my space and my reality, not you, and when we do that, we can start to change, if you, if you sense more, there is more, yes, it's people get stuck in, the, in the, 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 the mode of thinking. And when we feel something, why does it feel? You can say, well, it feels right. It shouldn't, but it does. This is the true self. 
This is the program cell. Know the truth by the way it feels. And that's all I can say today. Because there's, my goodness me, there's so much information coming. But know it by how it feels. And let it run. Even if you're incredibly skeptical, which you have every right to be. Um, let it run and let's see the pieces go and then make a decision at the end. But how does it feel? Not how does it perceive from my belief system. Awaken, awaken, awaken. Awaken from the program. And what's the first stage of that? The very first stage. Leonardo da Vinci had it. All great acts of genius began with the same consideration. Do not be constrained by your present reality. Because if we're constrained by a present reality, we're going, yeah, rah, 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 yeah, 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 truth, 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 academic school, work, yes, death, I'm, I'm out of here now. I'm going round and round and round and round. That's all you can do unless you cease to be constrained by your reality and break out of that circle and look elsewhere. When you can see through the illusion, you are the solution. Because then the illusion ceases to have power over you and your perception of self and reality. Is this real life or is this fantasy? I, I, it's, it is fantasy because it's all an illusion, an illusion on a scale that we would beg a belief if we didn't see the evidence to back it up. But this is crucial. I'm going to be talking as the day goes on about how this world's manipulated and to what end. Deep, deep, deep in the rabbit hole. And that, you know, when I started on this journey, it was a very lonely place. There were very few people walking on it anywhere in the world. Long time ago, 25 years. And there are now very large numbers of people. Fantastic, great, wonderful. Uh, putting this information out about the manipulation, but on certain levels. I would just say to them that we're never going to, A, find the true nature of what's happening, or the answer to bringing it to an end, unless we appreciate the nature of reality itself, because at the inner core of those who are manipulating this world, they understand what reality is and thus how to manipulate it while they keep us in ignorance of that same information. Illusion comes from illusio, ludere, to play, to mock. And it plays and it mocks with us if we don't realize it's an illusion. And, of course, it's all real. Consider that you see less than 1% of the electromagnetic spectrum and hear less than 1% of the acoustic spectrum. As you read this, you are traveling at 220 kilometers a second across the galaxy. 90% of your cells in your body carry their own microbial DNA and are not you. The atoms in your body are 99.9999% empty. I say 100% personally. Um, uh, and uh, space, and uh, none of them are the ones you were born with. Human beings have 46 chromosomes, two less than a potato. Uh, the existence of the rainbow depends on the conical uh, photoreceptors in your eyes. To animals without cones, the rainbows do not exist. So you don't just look at a rainbow, you create it. This is pretty amazing, especially considering that all the beautiful colors you see represent less than 1% of the electromagnetic spectrum. And then there's this. Um, every second, 11 million sensations crackle along the brain pathways. The brain is confronted with an alarming array of images, sounds, and smells, which it rigorously filters down until it's left with a manageable list of around 40 from 11 million Thus, 20, 40 sensations per second make up what we perceive as reality. Okay, we have an expert. What we know is, what we know is shit. And then we can get somewhere. And think on this. All the institutions that run this world and dictate its direction and dictate its sense of reality are all founded on the fact that this world is not an illusion, that it's really bloody solid, and all that quantum physics and the rest of it is irrelevant. And thus, bollocks begets bollocks. That's one of my laws, that. Bollocks begets bollocks. 
If you hit a piece of glass in the center with a hammer, it doesn't just smack where it hits, it goes off distortions, inversions in every direction. And if the very basis that you found society on is a fundamental misunderstanding of reality itself, then that flaw, that fundamental flaw, must infest every area of human life. No wonder it's a bloody madhouse. Here you go, the bamboos and establishment science, education, media. Just, just, just sticking itself up its ass, thinking it knows it all. Reality is merely an illusion, albeit a persistent one. Albert Einstein, and there's a reason why it's persistent. I would suggest after 25 years of putting this together, uh, we live in a virtual reality universe. And uh, is that really so hard to imagine anymore when you see the scale of reality that we see in these video games and stuff now, and movies? where it looks increasingly like the very reality that we're decoding. Even faces, people are looking more and more like each other in virtual reality. All right, this one. And they're now using virtual reality in burns units to change the dressings because the reality being piped to the eyes um, takes over, hijacks the brain's perception to the point where it doesn't feel the pain as it would normally. When you look at virtual reality in its uh, developed sense, its uh, more developed sense, they've got the gloves on, they've got the goggles on. And all that is doing is hacking in to the way the body decodes reality anyway. Hacking in to the five senses, technologically going to be very, very significant as we go through section two today. And it can be so incredibly real. And all it is, is a fake reality being fed to us technologically. And it's an interactive wireless cosmos that we are experiencing. You know, when you go out with a computer and they've got this Wi-Fi stuff every bloody where now, you're sitting in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of a town, wherever, and you sit there, and from the unseen, you are downloading or decoding onto that computer an entire global reality that can be picked up anywhere in the world that it's available. A wireless internet, and I call it the wireless cosmos, and the brain is massively part of the decoding system of this wireless cosmos. This is a, a projection or a simulation, if you like, of what Wi-Fi looks like in the unseen. And it's just information in a energetic form. And the computer tunes into that, decodes it onto the screen as the internet. We do not have empty space between us. We have energy. We have electromagnetic energy. And we have in that energy information. And from that, what I call the biological computer, decodes that information into a sense of reality that we think is solid but simply cannot be. I'll go deeper into this as we go through here. The base form of our reality is waveform, energetic waveform, which can carry extraordinary amounts of information. I call it the metaphysical universe. It's the universe from which this one that we see, or think we do, comes. So, you have the information field, the cosmic internet, if you like, and we decode it through from that, through the digital, I'll get into all this as we go along, through to what is an illusion of physicality. Uh, called holographic. I'll come to that quite shortly. And now we have mainstream scientists saying this reality could be just a hologram, exactly what it is. And the most dense of things, rocks, mountains, however kind of they may be indestructible, they are at their base form an energetic information field. 
the, the more dense the energy, the lower the frequency, the denser and more solid the form appears to be. And uh, Nikola Tesla, the genius from which so much came, one of the great scientific geniuses of modern times, who in, in fact, in, in effect, gave us the electrical system. He gave us radar uh, because it was stolen from him. And um, he could see beyond the physical that we perceive. And he said, the day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, um, it will be, uh, make more progress in one decade than in all the previous centuries of our existence. Why? Because you go to the source of the reality instead of the decoded um, expression of that reality. You go to the source, not the expression of the source. So we live in this cosmic internet. Uh, on one level, it operates on an electrical, electromagnetic level. Of course, the brain is working electrically as it interacts with it. And the reason that animals can uh, be so sensitive to things that humans can't be, because they read the newspapers and watch Simon Cowell, um, but is because they have not gone through this system of programming. So they are naturally sensitive to these information fields and can pick up changes in it which is why animals can uh, feel earthquakes coming before they come. So what is the internet? People say, well, it's, it's like pictures and texts and colors on a screen. Well, yes, it is, but only on the screen. Everywhere else, it's electronic circuits and all that gadgetry. What is television? Well, it's pictures on a screen. Yes, it is, but only on the screen. Everywhere else, television, in the analog sense, is frequency fields and or you know the electrical kit that they do now with digital and our body mind the body mind as i call it is like a computer system which allows us to experience this reality and that is just like sitting in a in an office the person at the desk that can see the big picture is consciousness beyond the program, consciousness beyond mind, consciousness beyond the reality that we perceive, and that is experiencing the reality we perceive. If you cut that from that and isolate that in and of itself, which is what the program's designed to do, you detach people from their true self and their true perception of self. That's the thinker, the brain, the thinker, working it out. That's the knower. And if you detach the thinker from the knower, then the thinker is left helpless to have its thinking programmed by that which has been responsible for the disconnection of the isolation. So, if you program that level of self that's directly experiencing this reality, body-mind, with all this programming, you disconnect it from this, and that's how infinite consciousness can become an idiot. The brain is not who we are, it is a processor of information and a communicator of information. As this man rightly said, looking for consciousness in the brain is like looking inside a radio for the announcer. The radio is just decoding information, that's what the brain body is doing. We are conscious in a very narrow band we call conscious, that's what we perceive and think we're awake. But beyond that is the unconscious, the subconscious, which goes on and on into infinity. And the idea is to isolate the conscious from the greater self. So what we are in this reality is simply a point of attention, which the body focuses into a tiny, uh, range of free, tiny range of frequencies we call the world. I'll get into that in a second. A point of attention. But if we um, get caught in the program, that point of attention is so focused on here that we lose connection with the greater self and all the other insight, knowledge, awareness that is open to us when we connect with it. Not some guy in a spaceship, our greater uh, self, our greater consciousness. Consciousness is 
what I call consciousness is like the ocean. Whereas mind, it's the same substance, but it is far more limited. Like ice is the same substance as water, but it's in a completely different and more limited state. And if we get caught in that and disconnected from that, big trouble. And you know, when you look at the, the, the oceans, they say it's the South China Sea, they say it's the South Atlantic, the Indian Ocean, the North Atlantic, same bloody water. Same water, but what we do is we give our water, our infinite self, names, like Ethel Jones and Arthur Smith, and we give them um, identities without realizing that we are just points of attention within one infinite, eternal consciousness. We are like the white waves in an ocean. They look different to the rest of the ocean, but they're just a different expression of the ocean. This is a fantastic picture. This sums up humanity. We are expressing our point of attention as a uniqueness, which is wonderful. A unique personality, a unique person, a unique perspective, a unique point of attention. But at that time, we are connected to all the other points of attention in infinite awareness, which in the end are all us and they are, and we are all them. And so, when we go to war, we go to conflict, we are fighting ourselves. You hit yourself around the head with a baseball bat, they put you away. But we're doing that all the time because we've got caught in the illusion of the fact that we have space, empty space between us and we're all individual to the point where we're not connected. The ocean is the droplet, the droplet is the ocean. Drop the droplet in the ocean. Where does the droplet end and the ocean start? The idea of the conspiracy is to keep that droplet disconnected from the ocean. And when they do that, we have the world that we live in. Great line, Leonard Cohen. If you don't become the ocean, you'll be seasick all your life. And so many people feel this, this ache, this this sense of disconnection, this sense of longing that they can't put words to because one part of them, one, one level of them knows that we're all one. Everything is all one. Leonardo da Vinci, learn how to see, realize that everything connects to everything else. It's an ocean. We are a point of attention, but we are the ocean. My God, that's, that's what we are. We're the freaking ocean of infinite consciousness. What a job they've done to persuade us we're Ethel from the store. Near-death experience of, as of, of experience this. So often, the, 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 the common themes of what they say is incredible. How they leave the body and some, so, suddenly past, present and future are all happening at the same time, in the same moment how they have multiple levels of awareness at the same time. In the body, they had one level of awareness because the body focuses us in these frequencies, locks us in like a computer. Uh, from one of my books, the fear of death comes from the ignorance of life. There is no death. There's just a removal from the vehicle into consciousness in awareness of itself again. But you get people frightened of death and they'll give their power away to doctors and chemo freaking therapy and all of it because they want to stay alive because they fear death. There is no death. There's just a change of point of attention. That's all it is. Point of attention, point of attention. I'm terrified. If people say to me, don't you frighten, they'll kill you. Well, well, well so they kill me, all right? I'll leave the body and I go, oh God, I'm terrified, I'm terrified. Oh my goodness, it's such a nightmare becoming all that is, has been and ever can be in full awareness of itself. Um, <laughs> oh. If the doors of perception were cleansed, everything would appear to man as it really is infinite. The, this guy was, you know, from the 18th century, William Blake. I mean, this, this is universal knowledge through history. So we have a visible universe, that which we can see and bring into some kind of form and we have an invisible universe which is everything else and the visible universe is so tiny it is funny this is mainstream science they talk about dark energy dark matter i see that slightly differently but the principle is the same what you can see and what you can't see 
Um, so you have this massive area of stuff they say exists in this universe which we can't see. You then have light, electromagnetic spectrum, etc., which is 0.005% of what they say exists in this universe, and visible light, which is the only frequency band that we can decode into a visual reality, is a fraction of the 0.005%. We have an expert. What we know is... <laughs> what? Madness. Um, so... This is the visible spectrum within the electromagnetic spectrum. Look at it, it's tiny. And that's all that we can see in what we call the world. You say to most people, can you see everything in the space you're looking at? Oh yeah, mate, you can't see that much of it. So, we are in a frequency band. We call it the world, we call it reality, but there are other frequency bands interpenetrating this one, like radio stations and television stations, sharing the same space. And what you perceive is what you can decode, what you are, are, are um, decoding. And so through the body, the body, we, we perceive in a visual sense what the body can decode, which is this little band of frequencies. You go outside the body, now you're perceiving much greater frequencies, and thus your reality changes. If you wish to understand the universe, said Tesla, think of energy, frequency, and vibration. Exactly. So, our point of attention holds us in this reality unless we're open to consciousness. Because what happens is if you come into this reality, this visible light reality, and you hold that connection to consciousness beyond this reality, you have everything you need. You have the information coming through the senses to give you a fix on what's happening around you, but you have the big picture that's outside of this reality, that's not programmed by its perceptions and its sense of limitation, which can then uh, feed you insight, inspiration, intuition, to give you insight beyond that which you are directly experiencing. But you get disconnected from that big problem. You're now trying to get your entire fix on reality from the reality you are in. And if a network controls that reality and that information that's coming at you, they are going to program your sense of reality for life. What time is Simon Cowell and all that stuff? So, most people, and it is changing, hallelujah, brother and sister, but it's still the vast majority are caught in the program which they think is real and they think is all there is to see. And so in this world, there are people in the program who are only getting that sense of reality, and then there are people who've opened their minds and opened their hearts, can come to that big time, who are accessing another sense of reality, and these people call these people mad and crazy and dangerous. Yes, they are, they're dangerous to the prevailing program. So what is the universe? It is information. And what is the universe? It is information decoding information. When you put a disk in a computer, it's information. The computer is information, it decodes the information. One uh, part of information is encoded to be decoded, one information source is encoded to decode. And that's exactly how our um, reality works, except the body is, is decoding and also um, encoding. So we have what I call the body computer, a biological computer. Biological in the sense that instead of like an, uh, a desktop computer, you put information in and you press enter and as programmed it responds, a biological computer has the ability to assess information and make decisions about it, which is what the immune system is doing all the time, 24-7, without any uh, input from us. So the reason that they're able now to connect the brain directly to computers is because they're connecting two computers, one fantastically more advanced than the other, but still basically two computers. And form is in formation. Our base state is awareness, doesn't have form, it's just awareness. But we come into the, into the realms of form, and form is created from in formation. And so, if you look at the body, it's just like a computer in, in its basic sense. You know, when a computer don't work anymore, won't switch on, what do you say? My computer's dead. 
Um, it, goes, it goes into sleep mode to save energy. It has um, an antivirus system. That's our immune system. Best antivirus system um, ever. The brain is the central processing unit. And then you have DNA, which is basically the hard drive. And um, the senses are decoding systems, decoding information into a form that the brain can uh, decode. So the senses are taking waveform information, vibrational information, they're turning into electrical information, they are communicating it to the brain, which then decodes that into a sense of reality we call the world we live in. So the world that we think we're living in exists there. And worth thinking on this, if you can manipulate the sense of reality of that and the way that decodes that information, you are dictating the experienced reality of the target population. And that's what's happening all the time. And when we realize that, we can stop it happening, which is the whole point of me doing it and standing here, really. So you look at um, the motherboard of the body. That is the uh, system of meridian lines of energy uh, used in acupuncture, which uh, take information around the body. You know, when, when, when um, information is passing around the computer too slowly, um, things start to malfunction. And what do we say? My computer's so slow today. Yes, because the information is not passing around at optimum level. When the information is not passing around these uh, chakra systems uh, and um, uh, meridian line systems, then the computer malfunctions, we call it dis-ease, disharmony. And so what acupuncture is doing, okay, you know, dogma bloody Dawkins, acupuncture load of rubbish. No, mate, you just don't understand what reality is. Perfectly logical. What the acupuncturist is doing is using these needles and other techniques to uh, make sure the flow of energy, information around the uh, meridian system is optimum. This is why in ancient China they used to pay the acupuncturists when they were well but not when they were ill because his job was to make sure they never got ill. Um, oh, another thing uh, for uh, uh, people who are skeptical of this stuff, people say, you know, you see this in the media, he's saying you, you put a needle in your toe and you cure a headache, that's crazy. Well, it's not crazy, it's perfectly logical. If the problem with the head is that one of these meridian lines of information is blocked in the toe that goes through the head, then it's no good putting it in the head if the blockage is not in the head. You put it in the toe and that clears the meridian which takes away the pain from the head. It's very simple. The brain is dark but sees light. How is that possible? How can my brain be totally dark and I see this light? Because that light in its prime form, like everything else, is just an information source. And I am decoding that information source in here into the visual reality of light because that's what the information contains. Thus, that's what it manifests when I decode it. One yeah, of the a real great open-minded man, you might call him some kind of mystic kind of man, uh, the late Alan Watts. He really kind of had a lot of good things to say. And he said this, Without the brain, the world is devoid of light, heat, weight, solidity, motion, space, time, or any other imaginable feature. All these phenomena are interactions of transactions of the vibrations with a certain arrangement of neurons. We have an expert. What we know is. So, this is right. There is no spoon. It's not the spoon that bends, it is only yourself because that spoon only exists in that form when you decode it from energetic information. People say it can't be done. I've seen it done. People walking across fantastically hot coals that should burn their feet off, but it doesn't. Why? Because if they go through the coals with the perception, here we go again, that they'll get burned, they'll get burned because that perception will lead to the decoding of the perception call an ambulance. But when you go into another level of consciousness that is not decoding reality like that, you walk through coals and not get burnt because an illusion can only burn an illusion